Hello, I'm Al and welcome to 60 Diesels. Um, today we are on a port two of said dumb Mercedes T1 uh, front scuttle panel. Um, I'll show you a bit of time lapse first of us, of me drilling all the spot welds off, um, obviously where you got to drill them and what we just cut it off. And then I will be back at the end of that to show you what horrors were underneath it. I drilled all the spot welds, I'm sure, as you've just seen, and I didn't really have to do much around the vent panels. We'll give it a good tug. I've cut it in the corners for the minute, away from where I need to join it in here, um, just purely to allow me this bit easier. But there we go. Look at that. That's going to be fun. So basically, I think these pretty much have it. Um, I'm not even sure if I can get them, I should find that out. And we have what could be described as a fairly rusty bulkhead. Um, <laughs> all's accessible. Um, I still haven't dropped the dash out the back of it, but I will in a minute if I need to, as I'm going to have to get in here and I'm going to have to make all of this. Because this is absolutely naked. So, as you can see, we've, um, dashboard is out, and um, you can see how far in this rock gets. I mean, if you tried welding all the, one of these fans up, I have seen it done, so we set fire to one. Um, I was in a desperate, desperate rush to get a dashboard before the people that owned it found out. Um, it's easier to spend the time because the carpets are dear to the back of it. Um, I've, as you'll see on the time lapse thing, I've popped all the wiper spindles out, they're gone. Um, See, it's obviously deep in here. I mean, uh, someone has been in here many years beforehand and finally blasted all up, which probably made it even worse. I have just at the moment cut through here, cut through here and knocked this section out because it is so bad. Um, strangely enough, this was actually, we do have the original Mercedes factory book and, um, and there is a, a whole section on how to replace a bulkhead because um, this panel basically is technically spot weldable and drillable and removable sadly you cannot buy it anymore um so my cutting plan is we'll come through there's a support rail on the back of here which was quite rusty in the middle it gone here so as you say as i say i'll just cut it off for the minute i am going to go the panel join is in here in the back let me just creep around this side so it actually joins onto the bulkhead just there so what i'm going to do is I'm going to replace the whole top half of this, um, including all of this, all the way through, all the way over to the other side. Uh, and I'm quite lucky, because if it wasn't for the Mercedes hoarding instinct again, we'd be in real trouble, because I don't think, unless anyone wants to correct me, you can buy that panel. Now, I have this for a, well, it's a 410D. It's very rusty. Down the sides, it's not good, as you can see. That's why we took it apart. Um, but... The screen panel's good. I'm going to have to take the windscreen out. So, well, um, I forgot to add the windscreen removing video to the, to the first link. I'll shove it in this one so that you know how to take a windscreen out. But as you can see, the bulkhead on this one is absolutely cracking. There's no rot in the vent panels. I mean, these are only glued, literally sticky taped to the outside here. 
So I will pull the wipers, pull the windscreen, um, save the seal, because you can't, I don't think you can get them. Um, I'm gonna have to take this wing off, but I've planned on doing that anyway, because it's actually quite good, apart from the dent in the front, and it is an original Mercedes one. Um, and I will then cut this out, and I'm going to go and have to remove master cylinder. I mean, luckily enough, this truck's scraps or anything taken off of it. Um, can go inside out of the way, but I'm gonna cut the whole top of that bulkhead clean off. Um, I mean, we've already had some corners and some bits off of it before. Um, so hopefully this inner here actually looks pretty good. If that survived, we'll cut that out. That could be scarfed into that one. Um, I mean, to be honest, the other choice was if this one hadn't had that corner off of it, you can actually de-seam them all the way through here, up over on the top of here, round down and pick them out and take the whole bulkhead out. Um, but obviously cost-wise, I mean, it's getting expensive now for this fella because um, this is a lot of work. Um, so what I will do, um, I'm running out of time for the day, so I'm gonna button this one up and she can go back inside um, and I will, I'll be back in a minute, but for me, it'll be a day or so again. And I'll try and get out here tomorrow, take these wiper blades off, take this windscreen out, cut this scut front scuttle out. I won't destroy it doing it. I'm gonna drill the spot welds, because to be honest, we have had a chunk out of it here, but there's still plenty of usable bits of metal. Um, if we ever got to sort of repairing some other stuff instead of having to destroy a whole brand new panel. And also some of these panels, if you've never noticed doing one of these, there is an angle difference between the original Merc panel at the top here, the screens off and the replacement one. It's not a major problem, but it is an annoyance. Um, so I'll stop babbling and I'll be back in a minute, but a minute will be a day. If that makes it well, a minute for you, day for me. Right, so here we go again. We are, ooh, wrong way around, sunshine. Sunshine, too much sunshine. Uh, Mercedes T1 windscreen removal, as promised. Let's go right, round here. So, luckily enough, this old bus is scrap. I did video it on the earlier one and then forgot to add it. So, what I'm going to do is set up a bit of time lapse as normal and um, I'll get pulling this windscreen out um, without breaking it. I've sort of got the hang of it, so it should be all right. Um, right, I'll go to the cameras. So, what we're going to do then is um, Obviously, this is a scrap vehicle, but I need the bulkhead for our, for our current camper van. So I am going to pick this rubber out from the inside. Go around here, ignore all that. Um, and while I generally, the rubbers are quite hard to get these days and the windscreen's quite valuable. So we're going to gently fold the rubber in from the top corners, work our way round, and then hopefully it, um, it should pop out um, using a range of sensible, ideally, plastic tools because as we all know big sharp screwdrivers and windscreens be silly it's not a good combination but i need to push corners in with something more substantial and then i just use a little rubber trim tool to push the outer edges back in i'll um i'll set this up and get going we'll start from the inside first i think it's probably best but i might have to move some stuff because this old well bus is a bit of a mess right i'll be back in a moment Basically what I've done, if you can see, is I've folded the windscreen rubber around. It's pretty, you have to go be careful to I me. Mean, this is a metal tool, but I can't find the plastic one. So all I do is pull the edge out here, push it in and under, like so, all the way around the windscreen. Bit more difficult with this bus because it's got a fitted egg line. But on out of the stage, as you can see she's popped out of the top. Um, I leave the bottom in because she will lean the screen forwards popped here as well so what we'll do now is gingerly have a clear in front and um, try and pull the screen forwards out and then we can stack it somewhere safe Right, so basically, that's that out. Um, I'm probably going to make this a fairly short video. I'll add this piece to the second part because what I've got to do next 
He's doing all this and pulled all this out again, which, to be honest, isn't very interesting. I'll, um, I'll drill this panel off because we're going to try and save it, as I said before. Um, pull all these auxiliaries off and I'll get the stage where I'm cutting the bulkhead out. And then as soon as we've got the bulkhead cut out, we'll hop back on the next video, get the other T1 back out of where it's sat. And then, um, and then we'll get cutting and, and putting that in. Um, I mean, literally at the moment, I haven't done anything video wise for three weeks because we've been so busy. It's mental. And what I might do in a minute is just give you a quick wander around because we've had a, or I have, I've had a massive clear up. We've got some new stuff in and we've got some things finished, some stuff gone. So I'll chuck that on the end. That might be quite interesting. And then we've got some other projects, um, customer stuff that we've got in that also could be quite interesting. So I'll give a bit of a lead to those and then we'll shove some more videos on in the next couple of weeks as we finish them. So I've had massive, massive workshop tidy up, as you can see. Um, the little fear is actually done. It did leave. It was a week gone and they've got to close the bonnet. It flipped up whilst whizzing along and... Um, and it, uh, get it in, in the thingy. It uh, didn't do it to the greatest of favours, so we've got to try and uh, reattach a window spindle, a windscreen wiper spindle. Sorry. Anyway, um, we've got some cool stuff in. Uh, One five eight in with some fairly serious problems. I'll um, I'll talk through that in a second because if you possibly listen to me, you might save yourself a load. Not that that was this fella's fault. It is a part fault, and I'll tell you about it before it. <laughs> before you buy one off a certain car parts supplier and do a shitload of damage to your wagon. Um, also got this in, um, which I bought the other week. Um, I'll toddle around the front in a minute. If you look at the registration number on this, which is BN55 Delta X-Ray Mike, um, I have my camper, which was always a weird thing. It was a 314 petrol LPG with a load of random options. We never knew where it came from. It was just one of those buy-ins. But it's twin, um, transport for London, uh, Euro compliant service vans. There were two of them, apparently, so I've bought both of them. Like well, you do. Um, bum, bum, bum. What else have we done? So, trigger. Dear old trigger's still here. Trigger is turning into a bit of a nightmare. I won't go and stand on this bit of floor in front of me because I've just painted that as well. So, um, we have been. We've got to get back on trigger. It belongs to him, say, a mate of mine. It was in one of the first videos. It was supposed to be a couple of small bits of welding um, and has turned into an absolutely massive task. I'll, um, I'm going to spin the camera around now. We'll have a wander around the workshop and then I'll say, I'll make this the end of this video and then we'll have to get back on some more next week because we just haven't got to it, or I haven't got to it as well. Because we have been so busy. I mean, customer stuff has gone mental. I mean, the outside you can hardly move. There's vehicles everywhere. But it's all good. So um, so this is, a, I think she's late, like 05, 06. Um, 15828 Volkswagen. They were the biggest horsepower, the fastest. So 158 brake. Um, it's a MWM engine, 2.8 litres, four cylinders, turbocharged. And it, um, it's gear driven. On the back, there's a big gear pack. And, uh, and basically everything runs off of it. I mean, you'll struggle to see until we get it apart. So the fuel pump, um, there are two versions. This is a 158. There was a 131 before with a mechanical fuel pump. Um, this is high pressure injection. So the water pump, all the engine timing, um, the high pressure fuel pump, and then there's a vacuum and a power steering pump combined bolted in the bottom down by the starter motor that side. Now this fella's a lovely lad. And he had a noisy power steering pump. So he went to a certain, really ought to name them, but the European car park supplier, you can work it out from there. And they do, this is a genuine VAG pump. Um, this was his second attempt, but he bought the L cheaper Euros um, pump. And there's a bit of an issue with Euro car parts pumps that the gear pitch on here, is not the same. I mean, you can see how much thinner those cogs are. I mean, this one had to be basically cut off because the ship, not ship, the, the dead pump, um, we've just used to block the hole when they have to move it. It's not happy. I mean, it won't, we haven't even tried starting it because the timing is so far out because it smashed all these to pieces. So you can see what it's done to that cog. And of course, it's destroyed all the gears on the back side of the engine. Um, this is the correct, um, Volkswagen one they are very expensive but there's a reason so the gear gear pitch is different the size of the gear is different I don't know how they get away with selling them but all they do you might sell yourself 200 quid for a little bit until you end up with a ruined engine so um to access the gears is the most well it's not difficult 
can take the engine out. But I've found best way because the gear pack is in here in the back of the engine. There's a flywheel spacer and the gear, all the gear packs bolted in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'll video it and put it on, is we're gonna pull this gearbox out, which is easy, takes about 40 minutes. These sprint, older sprinters and older LTs, you couldn't pick anything easier. And then we're gonna pull the dual mass flywheel, which is in here, this back flywheel surround, and then we'll get into the gear pack on the back of the engine, see what damage has been done. Luckily enough, I have all the original they used, but parts, gears, bits and bobs necessary to save this thing. Um, and I don't think it's come out of piston yet. It is still turning over, although it doesn't sound particularly healthy. Um, so we'll do that. Um, on this one, this is, this is quite a random one. So this is what's known as an M111 engine. It's a 2.3 litre, four cylinder Mercedes engine. Um, Bever round. An S230 SLK, you'll recognise the rocker cover under there. It's basically what is the 230 supercharged engine, but minus a supercharger. Um, this one, I don't know who put it together, but it was pretty horrific. Um, I think it started with a cylinder head gasket, um, and then they must have thrown half the bolts away. Um, they tried to put a timing chain on it, but the drive sprocket that's in here didn't have the cam recognizer picks up there the flash has so that so they mig welded that on in the wrong place and it is making some fairly exciting clackety noises um it's currently got the sump off um i think actually we probably got there quick enough and i say it's mine i've bought it um i've had the top of the head off i can't see any damage in there it's got new lifters in it trying to get rid of this tackety noise that they had um, but i think the tackety noise we thought could possibly be a little end so we've pulled the sump um, which was horribly put on and stuck on with silicon and then obviously freed all taken all the big end caps off and, and tested for what we if there was any real lift in the little ends and we can't see any but the shells are just to the point of coming apart so i'm going to mic up the crank um she was good i have mic'd up the crank that was good um it's not oval it hasn't done an awfully large amount of miles christ knows what's happened to it and i've ordered all the pieces from mercedes so we're just waiting on bits for that and then what else have we got Oh, we got one of those. I'll talk about that later. Um, transit. So, um, we're, we're quite far into the transit now, both sides. We've got every single panel we need now. So we are basically a complete rebuild. Uh, inner and out wheel arches on the front, foot wells, seals inner and outers. Um, I'm gonna start on the other side. I'm not a transit specialist in any way, but on the reverse, they seem quite easy to put together. So I might film it if any of you are interested because we're normally more Mercedes and Volkswagen. And as we say, we've had a, I've had a massive workshop clear up. It's been needing doing for years. So all the floors have been painted. Um, we've moved some tools into a proper secure room. Had a staircase built so we can actually walk up to the mezzanine instead of having to ladder it up there. Um, taking down a big spray booth that we had here that, to be honest, we never finished and never used. And built the engine hinge. So uh, that got everything on the floor in the back of a van all in one spot, even with some spaces still left because I've just acquired another 603. Um, and I'm going to just finally clear all this out rack it up and the place is just so much better and having the floor painted even though it's taken me every weekend for about a month um because current weather this stuff takes three days to go off um is making the place just much more pleasant so we're going to sort the walls out as well because they've gone all a bit festy but it's cracking look at that um and then i'll get this fan i've got to get on with this that's one of my next projects and i'm going to start on my 305 fan but anyway i don't need to waffle on about that i'm going to put this t1 video together um so i think we're going to end up probably with a part three and most likely with a part four and we'll do a video on this one so for all you 158ers they're good trucks but there are a few things to watch out and a few things that are interesting to know timing marks bits and bob stuff like that and for any of you um, who happen to be stripping or have problems with your 2.3 petrol sprinter, there aren't many, but there are also some 2.3 petrol LTs. And as far as I can remember, they're in the same engine. It might come in handy for that. Right, I'm going to sign off for today. I'll, this will be quite a short little video and then we'll try and get back on it properly next week.